Hey you guys, it's Kaylee. I am actually sitting in my temporary house, halfway house. I mean, I guess it kind of is a halfway house. I don't really know what to call it, but I am sitting um, kind of by the windows, just enjoying the scenery. To be honest, it looks really pretty in the background, but it's actually a swamp back there. But I thought it would make for a nice change of scenery. All right, so I am here with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about five things that really launch my business to the next level. I've done a video like this before, but obviously things have changed in my business. I now have an office space, I've got some employees, and just all in all in the last year, I think that I've done a couple different things that have really helped to launch my business, and I wanted to share that with you guys. To be honest, we are like right by a main road, so I don't know how the sound quality is going to be and I don't have my mic with me. So I'm going to apologize for that in advance. Of course, all of these things are my own personal opinion, but I am here on YouTube to share my journey. So I've got a bunch of post-it notes stuck together and we're going to go over them. So one of the things that I think has really helped me the most within the past year was really honing in and focusing on my own business model. If you don't know what a business model is, when it comes to reselling, basically all that means is what style you run your business with. And most commonly, the two that I see are you're either focusing on picking up items for cheap and selling a huge quantity amount of items to make sales and relying on selling quantity, or you're on the other opposite end of the spectrum, which is that you are trying to pick up higher end items so that you have to do less work, but you get the same amount of return. And typically that means you are spending more money. And then I do think there's kind of like a third option, which is you're somewhere in the middle of that. And honestly, I think that that can be the most dangerous place because you're back and forth and you don't really know what you want. So you're trying a bunch of new things all of the time. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't fall into kind of this middle category because I do pick up things that sell for maybe 20 or $25, but I also pick up things that are home runs. And I'm not necessarily focusing on picking up one or the other, but I do have kind of my own business model, which is trying to focus solely on sell-through rate, regardless of how much the item is going to sell for, as long as my buy cost and the sell cost makes sense. And this has, I think, have been really successful and helped my business to continue growing. And it is something that I definitely really hone in on and focus on. And it's given me kind of some rules while I'm outsourcing so I'm not all over the place. So focusing on sell-through rate for me and solely sell-through rate is kind of my business model and my business type. And I try not to deviate from that because once I start deviating from that, then I have to think through a different process and waste a bunch of time. And most often those things don't end up selling. So if there's any advice I could give you if you want to scale in your business and really grow quickly is to hone in on whatever business model you want. Now, obviously that's going to depend on your environment, what kinds of items you can get and how cheaply you can get them and how you wanna source. Do you wanna source online or do you want to drive and go to thrift stores or do you want to get wholesale? Depending on what your answer is to all of those and what you have available to you, that will determine your business model. But I do think that it's really important to decide on one and only do things that align with your business model. For instance, one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people making is they really want to transition to a big profit, less items, but higher profit business model, meaning that they are more willing to pay up for something to make a bigger profit and save themselves more time. I'll give you an example. If you go to the bins and you find, let's say five items and they each cost you a dollar, you spent $5 to get those five items and let's say they each sell for $15. Hopefully I'm doing math right here. It's been a long day, but that would give you a, a sale price of $75 for those five items. Is that right? That's right. But then the same person could go to the thrift store and find one item for $5 and sell that one item for $75. And that would be the difference between a quality model and a quantity model. 
Now, one of the reasons people want to do the quality model is because it takes less time to list that one item and they would rather be more relaxed and be able to just focus on finding a handful of select items that sell for a lot and then do less work in the long run when it comes to listing, shipping, and dealing with customers. And there are some downfalls to that, such as that items like that are harder to find, whereas if you are in the quantity, you can go to the bins pretty much any day of the week and find those items that are going to sell for $15 or more. I'm getting kind of sidetracked here, but the point is, is that there are two kinds of different ways of going about it. And depending on which one works best for you and what you want to do, you want to focus on that. So if I'm somebody that wants to focus on a quality uh, business model, and I only want to pick up items that are going to sell for, you know, more than X, let's say it's a $50 ASP or higher, then I should not be going to the bins. Now, if you want to go for fun, and again, this is just my personal opinion, but if, if you really want to focus on a high quality, um, less inventory model, then going to the bins doesn't really serve your business model. Because yes, you can possibly find high valued items, but the amount of time that it takes to find them at the bins versus just going to the thrift store, you're wasting a lot of time. And I think there's something called opportunity cost. That's a whole nother video, but thinking about your opportunity cost when you are deviating from your business model really makes a big difference in whether you are going to scale or not because you're just kind of all over the place and you're wasting time. That was a long number one, but it's definitely what I would consider to be the absolute most important. So if you're gonna follow anything in this video, really try to hone in on what is your business model and then only do things that align with your business model. Number two, the one thing that I have done for the entire past year was I had a VA share my Poshmark closet. I know some people are hesitant to use a service like this and there are what I would consider some that would be breaking the rules. We're not gonna get into that on this channel, but the one that I use is called Reseller Assistant and they are actual real people who are basically virtual assistants who will log into your account and do your sharing for you based on a schedule and the best times to share based on what you told them you would like them to do, whether that is self shares, community shares, follows, Although in my opinion, I would definitely put all of those allotted to self shares because it's one thing that's going to benefit you. But I was wasting a lot of time sharing my closet. And to be honest, if I still shared my closet to this day, I've got now over 2000 items active in my Poshmark. I would be spending hours every single day in order to share my Poshmark closet a couple to a few times a day. And that's just simply time I do not have and time that I could better spend on other things. When it comes to reseller assistant, I can't speak for the other sites or VA services or whatever, but I can speak for reseller assistant and I can tell you that their prices are super affordable. I have a whole video about reseller assistant. It's kind of old, but it still reigns true. So I'll link that somewhere up here. But if you want to get more time back in your business so that you can focus on things that bring you more money, like the sourcing or like the listing or like dealing with customer service, hiring out to a VA service to do the little task like sharing that just take up a lot of time, but really anybody could do it is in your best interest. And speaking from personal experience with reseller assistant, it's super affordable and it pays off within the first week. So if you've been on the fence about getting a VA for a sharing service, I am an affiliate with Reseller Assistant. My link is down below. I already have affiliate code where you can save 10% off of your first order. You must be a new customer. Your first order on Reseller Assistant when you use my link down below and you use a code will give you 10% off. But if you guys wait until the end of today's video, I am actually going to do a giveaway and I have five 25% off coupons for your first order on Reseller Assistant. Stay tuned until the end of the video to figure out how to get that coupon if you've been someone who's been wanting to try that, that VA service. Number three, the one thing I did this past year that helped really boost my sales was to simplify my processes and go back to basics. So I think I've talked about this before, but I've been through several different photography structures where I had, you know, like a backdrop, a hanging backdrop. I had half shell mannequins. I've done flat lays. 
all of that just to say that after trying all of those things, I went back to basics and now I just have a command hook on a white wall. My process is very simple. Everything goes on a hanger and gets photographed the same way. I don't do anything special like putting props or uh, modeling or anything like that. I really focus on simplifying my process and getting rid of clutter and doing what is tried and true and works but doing it in the most simple manner that costs the least amount of time. I also used to spend way too much time over analyzing my listing and looking up every single little drop down to try and figure out um, you know, what style names are called and things like that. And now I just kind of crank through them. I do what I know, I do what's required, and then anything else that is recommended, I try to fill that out. But I really focus on the simple things, the things that a listing really needs to have in order to sell, which I think are keywords, a great title, a right price, and sourcing the right items. But really simplifying my process and not going too crazy with a bunch of different steps in each of my process has really helped me to really crank out listings and get more up every single day. So if you feel like you're doing too much or there's too many steps in these processes to get your items listed, whether that's photographing or listing or shipping, you are probably overcomplicating it and you need to go back to basics and just really crank through those items to get more up. Number four is I started taking photos first. Now, I do think that for a lot of people, they might say this may not work for them. Again, this is just really what works for me. But within the past year, I started taking my photos first and whether I'm gonna be the one completing the listing or my virtual assistant or one of my helpers is going to be the one completing the listing, for some reason mentally taking the photos first and getting over that hump really helps me to want to go ahead and complete the listing because I know half of the work has already been done. Now in our photos, we include measurements and the weight of the item as well as the size and the material. That way, all of that information is already up, not only for the customers, but for us. So all we have to do is sit down, go into the draft and list off of the pictures. So almost all of the work is completely done. And I think that when you do the photos first, a lot of the leg work is already done. So a lot of the manual labor that you would have been doing is already done when you take the photos and then you don't have to double dip. So what I mean by that is if you list first and you create the draft first, you're touching those items, you're handling them. And then when you go to take photos, you've got to handle them again. If you just take photos first, you can handle your items, take all the pictures you need so that you can list off of the pictures. And then those can already be stored and be ready to put away. And it makes it a lot more motivating to go back into the listing because you can just sit down on the computer or on your phone while you're on the couch and really blast through those listings without having to touch the items again. So again, maybe that's not everybody's cup of tea or maybe you don't know yet if it will work for you. Give it a try because it just completely changed my mindset on listing when I started taking the photos first and getting those uploaded into drafts. I almost think that's reselling sometimes is just tricking yourself to be motivated and that's one of my tricks is taking photos first and number five was i set myself working hours so before when i was just working out of my house and i had a couple helpers here and there i didn't really have a set time when i was set to work and eventually you know i was just kind of work was bleeding over into my personal life and I just wasn't getting as much done. Once I started holding myself accountable, starting at this time and finishing at this time and going home, I really started figuring out how to be more efficient because I knew I wasn't going to be able to come back to work later that evening. It probably helps that I do have a separate space and I'm sure this would be a lot harder if your business is still in your home, but you can still do it. You can still set working hours and you can tell yourself, I'm gonna start at this time and I'm gonna end at this time and that's it. And you force yourself to step away from the business at let's say 
4 or 5 p.m. and once that's done you're not going to start on anything else until the next day. If you do that you're going to force yourself to get the work done within your working hours and I bet you're going to be a lot more efficient. Again it's just mind games to trick yourself into being motivated but if it works it works and it definitely works with me. All right, you guys, so I think those are all of the tips that I have for you today. I hope that you guys find them helpful. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, I do have five coupons to give away for 25% off your first order with Reseller Assistant. Again, Reseller Assistant is a service that has virtual assistants that will share your Poshmark closet for you. The cheapest plan is for a week's worth of VA service and they'll share your closet every single day. Depending on how many items you have, they might be sharing your closet more than once a day. And it's only $24.99 without any coupons. If you've been thinking about using this or as I've been talking through the video, something that you might want to try, that option I feel like is a really inexpensive option to try out the service. And if you decide you don't like it after that, then you can go back to sharing on your own. But I promise you guys, it is totally worth it. And that 25 bucks pays for itself. Now I do have five coupons for 25% off of your first order for five people. But if you are not one of the winners, you can also use my affiliate promo code down below in the description, my links down there as well, for 10% off your order if you're not one of the five people chosen for the giveaway. I actually don't know how many people are going to be interested in this, so the giveaway could be a fail. The giveaway could maybe only three people and then those three people get a coupon. I don't know. I don't know how interested you guys are in Reseller Assistant, but um, I do know in the past when I've mentioned this service, a bunch of people have asked me about it and a lot of you guys have signed up using my code, so thank you so much. Okay, back to the coupons. So. I am going to do the giveaway the same way I did that inventory box giveaway, which is I want you guys to comment down below. I will not accept duplicates. So if you do want to do a giveaway comment and then you also want to ask a question, it's totally fine. It's just, just know you're only getting one entry into the giveaway because this um, generator that I use removes duplicate comments. Okay, so if you guys would like to be entered into the giveaway, what I want you guys to do is to drop a comment down below and I want you to tell me what in the last year, in the last 365 days, is the one thing that you have changed in your business that has made a big difference in efficiency in your business and has made the most difference. It doesn't even have to be a huge change. Maybe you now put your scissors in another place in your office because you realized you were having to walk back and forth. Or it could be something as big as I decided to triple check my items at the thrift store so that, so that I was no longer coming home with holes in the items that I didn't realize. It could be anything guys, but I wanna know what has been the most influential for your business in the last year. So drop that comment down below for the giveaway and I will do a random five people that want the coupon. Again, this coupon is for 25% off of new customer, new orders. So you must be a new customer of Reseller Assistant. I will announce the winners sometime later this week, and then I will communicate with those winners through the comments on YouTube with instructions on how to proceed to get your coupon. All right, guys, I think that's about it for my tips and giveaways today. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.